Okay, are we ready to go? I'm ready. Okay. This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter. This is Tiny at Obsessive Tiny on Letterboxd. And this is ObsessiveViewer.com's The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Hello and welcome to The Obsessive Viewer, where a movie and TV podcast that covers a specific topic via genre, trope, movie, or show each episode. You can find more of our work at ObsessiveViewer.com, more of our podcasts at ObsessiveViewer.com slash podcasts. You can also like us on Facebook and join the Facebook group at Facebook.com slash The Obsessive Viewer. Uh, and finally, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash obsessive viewer and uh, at the minimum rate of $1 per month for an exclusive RSS feed for content recorded specifically for Patreon supporters. And I do not have a ridiculous ad read for this, but I will say that, uh, yeah, uh, consider pledging on Patreon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, $1 gets you access to an RSS feed with B-roll episodes. $2 gets you that B-roll episode feed plus TV reviews and reaction recordings and Five dollars gets you those two things plus commentary tracks I record, and then ten dollars gets you all of that plus early access and unreleased content. So again, that's at patreoncom slash viewer. And uh, yeah, oh, do I want to say that? Uh, first of all, I'm your host Matt Hurt, one of your hosts Matt Hurt, and with me today, as usual, is Tiny. Hola. Hi, Tiny. How's it going? Es bueno. Nice, nice. And Espanol. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know why. Que pasa? Uh, <laughs> Dinero, peso. Yes. Um, I was trying. Baño, to... biblioteca. Yes. Just saying words, you know, because right. I don't know. Um. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um. I was going. To, I was going to put you on the spot. Um. Y- you are slash were a Patreon supporter. I am, as far as I yes. know. Oh, just the 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 the, the I sent you the screenshot that it declined last month. Something goofy happened with my PayPal. Oh, that screwed that I up. See. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know it if you guys sh- had straightened out. Or it not. should be straightened out. They're gonna break my legs, tiny. <laughs> 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 They're gonna break my legs. God. Um, no, actually, I think what I'm going, what I'm doing with the Patreon money is I'm letting it uh, build up, and I was either going to because I use that to theoretically I use that to pay the fees to keep the podcast running, as I say, right. Because uh, every month you, uh, every month I pay Libsyn to host the feeds for all three podcasts and everything. Mm-hmm. But what I think I'm going to do because I because I cash out Patreon you know, whenever there's money in there, but mm-hmm. I've been letting it build up over the last few months. And I think what I might do is either a put it toward finalizing the upgrades for the equipment. So like another boom arm and microphone for the home studio mm-hmm. and then another microphone for the, for the mobile recording setup. Gotcha. Or find a way to use it to beef up the look of the website. <laughs> <laughs> like gotcha. get an actual premium theme so I can mm-hmm. like, make it look okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, because I never, I don't think I ever told you this. I don't think I ever said on, uh, this on the podcast. But fuck it. Um, last year I applied to be on uh to to be a uh, a critic for Rotten Tomatoes, like on the tomato. Rotten Tomatoes thing. Mm, nice. Yeah. Well, I got denied. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, yeah, and that's fine. Um, but they, I, I think the feedback. This is again a year ago. Um, their feedback was that they wanted more. Uh, they wanted. Uh, I, I've in no uncertain terms it said like we want your website to look nicer. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Um, and they said like oh you know you can reapply in like September of 2021. So I have like mm. a a uh, 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 bookmark on my or. Uh, I don't know, an event on my calendar for September. It's like, oh, look into um, Run Tomatoes. And I was like, you know, I could just get like a premium theme. I don't know. It's all, this is all inside baseball. So I don't yeah, know. Okay. Yeah. So we'll see. That'd be cool. Yeah. It's funny because yeah. I like the look of our website. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I mean, I could take or leave it really. Especially Tower Junkies. I don't know. <laughs> Tower Junkies looks, looks better. I, yeah. I like Tower Junkies. Um, it's just in my head and in reality. Um, it's, I mean, they're, Basically, they're free free WordPress sites and free right. WordPress themes. So, yeah. like, there's not a lot I can do with it mm-hmm. in terms of both in terms of aesthetic and in terms of functionality. So, like, I can't 
I can't embed like podcast episodes. Like I only just recently figured out how to do that with the free lips and stuff. Right. Or the free WordPress stuff. Um, but I don't know. I think if I could have it look better, it would be better. That's cool. Yeah. I fully yeah. support that. Obviously. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm just yeah, saying, awesome. I think you do a good job with it as it is. Oh, thank you. I do the bare minimum. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, although I have been, so, so yeah, peek behind the curtain or, or kind of, I guess this is, Promotion corner, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, I have been, I I have posted a couple of reviews, written reviews recently. Mm. Um, so I'm excited about that. This episode is not going out until next Thursday. So we're recording this the Thursday before uh, the 4th of July. And I just recently posted my written review of F9, the Fast Saga. Yes. And uh, the first of a series of three reviews of F- Fear Street on Netflix. Oh, cool. Yeah. Are you familiar with the F- Fear Street trilogy that's coming out on Netflix? No, I saw you post about it yeah. on social media and I don't, I'm not familiar with it. Okay. Are you familiar with Fear Street? No. Oh, interesting. No. So... Uh, R. L. Stein, who wrote Goosebumps, right? He wrote the Fear Street series, which is which was like Goosebumps was like a preteen horror sure. series. Fear Street was like a teen horror series, like YA, young adult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it was a little bit more mature. Okay. And uh, from what I read on Wikipedia, a little bit more gruesome. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, I only really read, I think, one Fear Street book. I was at the library with my sister, and I was like thumbing through R. L. Stein's stack. Uh, or his his shelf, and I picked up a Fear Street, and I remember like it be, it being like an experience. I don't remember what the title was or anything. It was a vampire story, mm-hmm. um, but this kind of kind of also is uh, interestingly relevant to our Patreon recording. But it was I, I remember being really into it because um, it was about like a um, coastal town. Um, like it, not Florida, but like kind of maybe New England, like North Carolina, I think, like okay. the coast of North Carolina. Yeah. Um, and, uh, kind of a resort town. And it was about, um, how, you know, like the, it's centered around like, like town, townies and yeah, right. like vacationing people that are coming into town and everything. And there's a vampire there. So, um, I just remember thinking like, oh my God, they're, they're talking about kissing um, <laughs> <laughs> and kissing on a beach. Whoa, this is weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and like, I just remember, I think that might've been like my first vampire story. Hmm. Um, but yeah, anyway, so Fear Street, um, <laughs> uh, Fear Street is, uh, being adapted into a trilogy of films and it is currently releasing on Netflix. Cause when you're listening to this, um, What's cool is that it's three three movies, Fear Street Part 1, 1994, okay. Fear Street Part 2, 1978, oh. and Fear Street Part 3, 1666. Oh, shit. Yeah. So the cool thing about that is that this trilogy of films are releasing on July 2nd. Okay. Then the second one is releasing July 9th. <laughs> and then the third one is releasing July 16th. Okay. Uh, so like each week, a new entry in the trilogy is going to come out. Cool. And uh, as of this recording, the first one comes out tomorrow. And I got a screener of it. And I watched it uh, last night. And it is a lot of fun. Sweet. It is. It's so much fun. Nice. So, yeah. So I have a review up there. I'm going to have a review of episode, or the the second movie um, ne- the day before this episode comes out. Um, so I'll put links in the show notes probably. But cool. anyway, yeah. So Fear Street, I'm liking it. Sweet. Yeah. I guess I was potpourri up top. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, what else? Oh yeah. So today on the podcast. <laughs> yes, today. Yes. We're going to be reviewing Black Widow. Mm-hmm. Um, the latest uh, entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the first movie of phase four of Marvel Cinematic Universe. And the first Marvel movie to have a theatrical release since Avengers Endgame in April of 2019. Jeez, that's nuts. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that is exciting. Um, any any new business we need to discuss beforehand? <laughs> I don't think so, man. I don't think so either. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Do we usually go into the <laughs> review this early? 
Um, I, I guess we're so used to doing tower junkies and we got check-ins I know, and all check-ins that stuff. and news. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I will say that uh, I apologize for the radio silence on the obsessive viewer feed, but uh, I took a little bit of a break, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but this weekend is a three-day weekend for me, and I am hoping to get a lot of Patreon stuff recorded and uh, a lot of stuff prepped for July. So hopefully, July will be a big month for the podcasts across the board. But let's start with Black Widow. Um, yep. So yeah, so I am going to read the plot summary courtesy of IMDb, um, which is the Internet Movie Database, of which I have an application on my phone, an app being a uh, a, a, a uh, an app on on the phone. I can't vamp that well. <laughs> um, okay, so so Black Widow rated PG thirteen. Uh, the plot summary courtesy of IMDb: A film about Natasha Romanoff and her quests between the films Civil War and Infinity War. So that did not <laughs> that was not worth uh, vamping and stalling for so long. Right, that was kind of yeah. lifeless. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're listening to the Obsessive Viewer Podcast. You should be used to it by now. <laughs> um, uh, okay, Black Widow stars Scarlett Johansson, uh, Florence Pugh as Yelena Belova, uh, David Harbour as Alexi, Rachel Weiss as Melina, um, O.T. Fegbinel uh, as Mason, and uh, Ray Winstone as Drakov. Um yeah. Also, uh, Olga Karlenka is in it. Yes. Um, directed by Kate Shortland. And, uh, yeah, it comes out in theaters and on, in, uh, and on Disney Plus with, uh, premiere access, I believe. Or did they announce that it was going to be premiere access or just? I dropped? don't know. Okay. I, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Cause the, um, the trailer has said premiere access. That's the w- one of the few things I don't like about, like, premiere access and VOD stuff is mm-hmm. like, okay, what can I only see in the theater and what can I get at home? And it's like, right. I can't keep it all straight. And it's like, the timelines are different for both. It's yeah. confusing. And I don't want to try to keep that information in my head. Right. Um, I guess that maybe that's just entitlement on my part, but eh. I don't know. Like it just comes out July 9th, like just right. uh, July 9th. That's all I need. Uh, that's what I want to know. And it's like, yeah, apparently it will be with premiere access. So it'll okay. probably be like 30 bucks to watch it on Disney Jeez. plus. Um, so yeah. yeah. Um, Oh, how do you feel about that? <laughs> I mean, would you ever pay thirty dollars for a movie that's in theaters? I don't want to say never. Yeah, to but, see it on at home. Right. I I would be inclined to not do it ninety percent mm-hmm. of the time. Okay. It would have to be a really special movie. Yeah. I think I said like Dune might be oh, something yeah. I would, but I really want to see Dune in the theater. So right. But I also think it could be beneficial if you had a couple buddies come over mm-hmm. and they give you ten bucks if it's thirty dollars. Yeah. I mean, that's would, le- less than a movie ticket. Right. I that's mean, true. I, I, it, I can see the benefits of it. And some yeah. people just, the attitudes are changing in regards mm-hmm. to going to the theater and people would just rather be at home. TVs are really yeah. impressive now. Right. And home system, home theater systems can be really impressive. So mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to knock the technology or knock anyone for enjoying that. But right. I, the theater is still a very sacred yeah. thing for me. So And we saw Black Widow in the theater yep. with... Um, a lot of members of the IFJA and local press. Mm -hmm. Um, The, uh, that was, um, I mean, we saw Mortal Kombat in the theater. Yeah. Have you seen any other movies in the theater since then? Nope. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, Yeah, let's let's talk about that and then we'll go into our non-spoiler review. Mm -hmm. Um, Check the show notes and everything, guys. So, what was, how did you feel about the press screening that we went to and the experience of being in the theater again for a Marvel movie? (laughs) Uh, It was great. It felt really Mm -hmm. good. Just to, see the um the marvel pre the their logo mm-hmm. thing come up was was really exciting to see that yeah. again um and i've been waiting for this for a while and a lot of people have been waiting for this movie for a while not just because it got um you know delayed because of last because of the pandemic last year right. but because it's um something you're going to hear me say a lot is this movie was 5 years too short right or 5 years too late mm-hmm. um so I, I was excited for the movie in general, but yeah, it was it was a good experience. Obviously, everyone with IFJ was very respectful. There was no yeah. no disturbances during the movie or anything mm-hmm. like that. And uh, um, you know, the theater was nice enough to let us do that. Right. With that limited screening, that was pretty yeah. cool. So yeah, it was. Uh, we also had to. I think it's okay if I say this. We had to like sign something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. After the screening, yeah, I, I didn't Disney. even read it. I assume it was oh, something yeah. like "Don't share any details." Or oh no, no, no. it was actually 
Um, I mean, it was basically you have now sold your soul to D- the Disney Corporation. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so <laughs> when you so don't be alarmed when you're on your deathbed, uh, like this this cartoon mouse is going to come into the room. Gotcha. As like and dressed in a robe with this this like uh, this like not cane but the staff like a like the or a scythe. Um, scythe yeah. Yeah. So like, well, he's gonna have to get in line. Yeah. Oh, yep. Um, yeah. I don't know what that means. I don't know. <laughs> You've already sold your soul to the Obsessive Viewer Podcast <laughs> <Right>. family. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, what that was was just uh, just uh, kind of um, telling telling Disney and telling the people screening it that oh yeah you're fine you don't have any symptoms of COVID. Um, oh, that was a yeah. COVID thing. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Huh. Um, yeah. So. Whatever. Yep. Yeah, we did have to wear masks. We did. Um, yeah. Yeah, I uh, wore my mask. I, <laughs> Air quotes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> On your chin. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, I mean, that's fine. I did that move. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just, it, reminded me, it reminds me of the guy... <laughs> At the press conference, the uh, the like the, the Biden crime family is. Oh God! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for comparing me to that. Oh, guy. you're fine. <laughs> it's fine. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. Um, I was a good boy, and I wore my mask the entire time. Wow. Um. Yeah. Well, you yeah. did a gold star. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm not gonna get any weird Mickey Mouse Grim Reapers on my deathbed. <laughs> um. So, uh. But yeah. But it was cool. It was very cool to see a bunch of people from the IFJ. Um. Mm-hmm. And everything I, I that the week before I had gone to a screening of F nine the Fast Saga, a review of which you can read on obsessiveviewer dot com. Mm. Um, that movie, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, it was fine. But yeah. uh, but yeah, uh, so it was it was cool to get to actually be in. An, it was interesting because it was cool to be in in the theater, which I've gone to the theater since getting vaccinated and everything. Um, yeah. Um, but it was cool to be in the theater with the uh, like IFJ members at a press screening and everything, um, and it was also interesting because today at work in in the building in in like in my day job, I actually had like the for the first time since March of last year, uh, I had an in person uh, meeting with my the uh, like the other people that I work with on like the team I'm on. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like it was just weird because it's like because we've had like just uh, virtual huddles and everything. Right. Yeah. So nature is returning. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so yeah. So Black Widow. Uh, ben Sears was in attendance. He was. He is not in attendance tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, he had to cancel. Um, I don't know why. So yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. We'll so miss you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um. So. Uh. Yeah. Should we get into our thoughts on Black Widow? Yes. Let's. Okay. So we are going to go ahead and go into our non-spoiler thoughts on Black Widow, starring ScarJo and. Uh, uh, Flo Pew um, <laughs> and uh, Dehar I don't know David Harbour De- yeah, Dehar Dehar um, anyway so yeah so okay this is like the 23rd Marvel movie um, <laughs> this is after we've had WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier on D- Disney Plus and then now we're currently in the midst of Loki mm-hmm. so how do you feel going into Black Widow as a theatrical experience and its placement in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, um, I I'm curious how how Marvel's going to go about continuing to do movies about the big Phase Three characters. Like, there's mm. another Thor movie coming out. Yeah. Um, still starring uh, Chris Hemsworth. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, there's Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow here. Um. Just some of the big temple characters, I was just curious how they're going to keep them relevant in Phase 4, or like, mm-hmm. what's going to be the big tent pole of Phase 4. Yeah, what's going to be the Thanos of Phase 4. Yeah, right, yeah. the Infinity War of Phase 4, or whatever, mm-hmm. the Avengers of Phase 4. Yeah. Um, and I, I still think that's up in the air, and I'm not sure Black Widow really... I'm not going into spoilers, but I don't mm-hmm. think it necessarily answered that question or, or gave us much guidance in that regard. Interesting. Um, but it was still satisfying. And I think um, Marvel still has stories to tell with those characters. And if they mm-hmm. still have stories to tell, I want to see those stories. Nice. So I'm, I'm more than happy to, to go watch those movies. I'm, Definitely, definitely looking forward to the fourth Thor movie, especially since it's you know they're returning 
returning mm. crew from uh, Ragnarok that was yes. the best one yet, the best Thor movie yet. Um, Taika Waititi and everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't really have much expectations about this. I actually didn't mm-hmm. really know a lot about about it. I knew it was kind of like a, but obviously going to be before Endgame and all that. Right. It was going to be a, a prequel in a way, if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. Um, backstory for for Natasha Romanoff, but mm-hmm. I wasn't sure how like how far in the past it was going to be. If it was going to be like oh yeah, you know, ten years before Endgame or thirty years. I don't I don't know. I wasn't mm-hmm. sure if she was supposed to be like a teenager or something still, like getting out of widow training. Like I I wasn't mm-hmm. sure how far it was going to go, and I was. Um, I wanted to kind of keep it that way. Yeah. Go, going in and just kind of going fresh and see what was going to happen. So, nice. Um, yeah, it was, um, it was, it was good to be watching Marvel in the theater again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. I, I, this might tip my hand a little bit at, uh, the review, but it was interesting that, uh, we, the, the movie started at six. And we got mm-hmm. out of there at like eight thirty. Yeah. Um. And I got home. I kind of dicked around in my apartment, and then went to bed about midnight. And as I'm laying in bed, I that's when I realized, like, oh, oh, that was the first Marvel movie I've seen in theater since <laughs> April of 2019. Wow. <laughs> and like, it just kind of hit me that way. And I I don't know if that is necessarily indicative of the quality of the movie that I didn't have that come to Jesus or that, that, uh, that kind of, uh, emotional resonance in the theater. Um, it was like delayed by six hours that I was like, Oh, that, <laughs> that was a special event for me. Right. Um, so I don't know if that's indicative of the quality of the movie or the, um, uh, the, <laughs> the, the breadth of the Marvel cinematic universe. Mm-hmm. Um, or if the Disney plus shows have just scratched that itch for me. But I think that it is noteworthy that I didn't even really consider how special of an event that was um, while I was in the theater. So hmm. I don't know. Maybe it was because it was it was like that kind of prequel slash weird chronology entry um, that I didn't really feel that because it wasn't like it wasn't like the movie was really offering anything new except right. for backstory for a character. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, I, I didn't mind it's. I didn't mind that it didn't come out until 2021 or 2020. Right. Um, I do agree that it was too late, <laughs> like, yeah. like that, that it should have come out sooner. Mm-hmm. But I don't mind that it... I, I'm glad that we got it in general. Right, right. Um, and I do think it handled it pretty well, um, which we'll talk about in more detail in the yeah. actual review. But I think before we yeah. get into it, I do think it's interesting. I, I don't know if you have an opinion on this, but I'm I'm wondering how fans and how movie buffs are going to feel about Marvel moving forward because it's, mm. it's like, because Endgame was so perfect. Yeah. I mean, it like literally the definition of hitting the nail on the head, right? Yeah. It's so, so well done there. They're, I don't think they're ever going to be able to even match that, let alone top that again. I, I don't care yeah. if they do a phase, a phase seven. Like, I mm. don't think they're ever going to get that. Right. That, that good again I, it was too special it was too special <laughs> yeah. that's a great way to put it and so it's like how how can are we ever gonna get that we're, we're not i think people people know they're not going to get that feeling again right with marvel and and that's a shame it doesn't mean they can't still tell good stories and make good movies it just right. means is the experience cheapened is oh, it interesting I, I don't know how to quantify or uh, even describe that mm-hmm. that malaise, I guess. After it's it's like the denouement. I don't even know how to explain it. Like it's it's like I I don't know how I feel about it. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm still gonna go see the movies, of course. Oh like, yeah, because there, there's gonna there's gonna be some good ones. But it's yeah. like it's it I it's it's un, it's unfortunate because I associate Marvel and all these characters with building towards Endgame, right? And they kept doing it year after year, mm-hmm. and then they perfectly executed the ending brilliantly yeah and it's like uh, now we should be done with it but we're still with these characters and it's like right i just don't know how to feel about it it's it's it kind of unprecedented it's mm-hmm. unprecedented for me as a movie fan mm-hmm. and i think there's a lot of other people who feel the same way well i agree but also uh to address that point i think that there are kind of two fronts that they'll that they'll go on going forward with phase four um and beyond 
Uh, one is that, yes, having kind of the big temple characters, having their movies like you, like you mentioned, Thor 4, um, Thor Love and Thunder. <laughs> um, but also that movie is going to have, um, I don't know if you're aware of this. Um, obviously Chris Hemsworth, mm -hmm. but also Natalie Portman is going to come back. I did know that. And, uh, it, at least some of the guardians of the galaxy are going to be involved in it as oh, well. Okay. Yeah. So I think on that front, they'll, they'll have a nice mix of kind of maybe not necessarily passing the torch, but definitely something that that'll be unique um, for mm -hmm. each entry. Yeah. But also they're introducing the new, the new characters for, for like new entries in it, like the Eternals, Shang-Chi, mm -hmm. um, Moon Knight is coming to Disney plus, um, okay. with Oscar Isaac. Um, but yeah, so I think that there's a lot of different things that they'll do, but also my hope and what I think is, is likely is fingers crossed. They're going to go super weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think that that's already been established with, uh, WandaVision. Yeah. Um, that show went super weird and it was a delight mm -hmm. from what I understand. Loki is doing the same thing. It's going super weird, super, super interesting avenues mm -hmm. um and then we've got uh dr strange and the multiverse of madness right which has all the markings of being super super weird <laughs> yeah. and fun um so i think that there's a healthy amount of uh variety to come i think okay yeah yeah yep um but you know we'll see right also we got a new captain america so and we're yeah. getting captain america 4 which is going to be really interesting with Anthony Mackie. No, oh, I didn't know they announced that. Oh yeah, the one of the writers or the head writer, I don't know, of Falcon and the Winter Soldier is writing a Captain America four script. Okay. Yep, yep. So I don't know, cool. but yeah, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, but let's go back to that fabled era of the MCU <laughs> between <laughs> Captain or between Captain America: Civil War and Avengers: Infinity War. Yes, and let's catch up with Natasha Romanoff mm -hmm. as she battles. Uh, her past and her sister's future? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, in Black Widow. So, um, so we're going to do non-spoilers, obviously, and then we'll play a clip from the trailer to do spoilers later on. Um, overall thoughts on Black Widow. Um, I'll say I was very entertained by it. Mm -hmm. Um, the set pieces were really cool. The way that it incorporated certain, uh, dramatic and emotional elements in regards to Ray Winstone's character and his, the way that he, the manner in which he creates his widows and them bringing back the kind of concept and the backstory of the red room from, I believe, Avengers age of Ultron. Um, all of that was really interesting. And I think the introduction of Yelena, played by Florence Pugh, is definitely intended to be a backdoor pilot <laughs> or yeah. to have her be, uh, you know, have, have her be in the MCU in some capacity mm -hmm. going forward. Yeah. And I'm all for that because despite a questionable Russian accent, um, <laughs> I think she's, she's a phenomenal actress. Oh, and yeah. yeah, and I'm all for her being on screen anywhere me too yeah uh so overall thoughts on black widow i definitely liked it myself um nice. i yeah i thought it was really engaging i think the casting was great and it was written fairly well pretty a pretty good script um mm -hmm. there's a couple couple things i kind of had issues with but um yeah and and it just had a really good flow to it as well that was the other thing mm -hmm. no, no pun intended with the forms, <laughs> forms, just, yeah. had a really good flow to it had a two really good, good scar two good flows <laughs> yeah <laughs> really good scar yeah. nice um <laughs> but uh but just just the way it it started out kind of with even more backstory kind of mm -hmm. went, went further back when they were kids and all that um and just just the way it went from there um the um chemistry of the family uh -huh. was it was right for the movie like yeah. it was um there was tension and distance um with this underlying closeness where they all sort of understand each other it was it was all really well acted and well done yeah. well written i, I like that was kind of the core of the movie that i think mm -hmm. really held it together um and uh i hadn't seen ray winstone 
in anything in a while. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the last time I saw him. Honestly, I, I'd have to check, but it, m- maybe Noah? Oh, yeah. Darren Aronofsky? I kind maybe? of forgot about that movie. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people did. <laughs> um, but I would, I would love to see Ray Winstone. Mm-hmm. Just play somebody's like fun uncle, <laughs> right? Or like the owner of a candy store. Mm-hmm. Like that, he is always just that dick and yeah. like an evil guy, and he plays it so well. Like, oh I, yeah, I, I liked him in this movie for sure. He, I, I think it sort of did kind of revert back to the Marvel trope where they have kind of a villain issue. Mm-hmm. Anyone who's not Thanos <laughs> is just kind of, eh. um, and th- that's been a problem with the movies. Uh, all the movies, um, mm-hmm. not all of them, but most of them have had pretty weak villains, and that's. I feel like Ray Winstone was kind of that. Um, I his character was kind of that. Like it wasn't a big deal. He w- definitely wasn't one of the worst ones. Sure, but um, was again they're never going to top Thanos. But mm-hmm. uh, he he was he was fine. Yeah. Uh, Ray Winstone was in 2019's. I don't think you ever saw this. Mm. He was in 2019's Cats. <laughs> Oh no, I never did see yes, that. Which I saw in the theater. Yeah. <laughs> um I do I don't think Ray Winston I don't remember the character's name. Um I don't think he's gonna be forgettable. I will oh, say yeah. that. He's he's not forgettable, but uh I I will say that I Drakov is the character. Yes, Drakov. I um I liked him in it. I don't think uh with all due respect, Tiny. Um <laughs> <laughs> per your last thing and other passive aggressive idioms that i can use here (laughs) um no uh to with all due respect um i don't think it was i don't think he was a bad villain i don't think he was i don't think he was uh as bland a villain as some of the other entries in the franchise have been Mm -hmm. but i think a lot of that is due to the level of his villainy or the psychological aspect of it right right. um because not to give away any spoilers which we'll talk about in spoilers but um the the psychological um uh kind of the psychological toll that he takes on natasha and the widows themselves um, that was more compelling than anything he could have been as a as a villain. True, uh, anything that's true. He could have done as a villain. That's very true. Yeah. yeah, and I like how, in the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of the MCU, this is a fairly grounded villain right. story. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and and I think that it was handled really well. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So I I think it's I think it's at best it's or at worst it's very memorable. Sure, and, and I, I liked it. I agree with that, yeah, especially the the third act yeah where it all comes together and we get the plan and all that shit mm-hmm. and it's he he definitely shown he sh- sh- shined yeah he shined in the those the the climax of the movie he right. definitely shined and that's that's the part i'm going to remember i think so yeah. yeah and he's he's pretty underutilized throughout yeah the rest of the movie before that too so i think right. them holding holding it back a little bit was was uh really worked out pretty well yeah yeah yep what did you think of uh florence Pugh? Oh, she was, yeah, she was good. I feel like, um, yeah, the Russian accent was there. Da. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the worst, but right. it wasn't, I mean, it, it, I didn't really care. Yeah. I, to be know. fair, I don't get hung up on, on bad accents and everything. Yeah. But I don't know. It was it, like, I came away from it thinking like, okay, if, if Yelena is going to be kind of maybe not the next the next Black Widow, but if she's going to be in more Marvel Cinematic Universe properties and everything, I really kind of hope they go the Elizabeth Olsen route, right. where That's she exactly just what I was thinking. phases out the accent. Yeah, um, and then uh, there's a and there's a subplot where she's talking about a bunch of food and stuff. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Yeah, or a bunch yeah. of a bunch of cooking and stuff because. <laughs> On Instagram, Florence Pugh does a lot of Instagram stories of her cooking. Oh, does it's she? It's very charming. She's she's a very charming actress. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I'm definitely a fan of Florence Pugh, and I think it's good that she's going to have you know, theoretically, like you were saying, she's probably going to be a part of the MCU now. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy that someone like her and someone like um, Brie Larson, mm-hmm. who and Scarlett Johansson, yeah, who are ridiculously talented, yeah. Uh, can have an outlet or a source like this where they mm-hmm. can basically go make a Marvel movie every yeah. two or three years and make a fuck ton of money. Yeah. And then go make 
um, marriage story or right. go, go make midsummer, little wi- midsummer or little, or yeah. little women, whatever. And, crush it yes and still act really well like mm-hmm. there's some emotional moments in in black widow mm-hmm. that are like very high caliber well acted yes. moments the the um, kind of family uh meal scene yes um stand out of the stand out of the movie for me i think okay talk about in spoilers definitely I think. definitely one of them yeah, yeah for me. emotional stand out right emotional stand out yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah there's some other other moments that are just incredible from scarlett johansson and florence pew yeah um and uh Rachel Wise, uh, the the one character I didn't, I don't know if I'd say I had an issue uh, with him, but I was a little underwhelmed, I guess, or just underwhelmed with the decision mm-hmm. for the character was uh, David Harbor as Alexi. Oh, interesting. He he was just so one dimensional. Yes, he, he was just he, he was just cracking jokes the whole. time. That's all he did. He barely he even when he it seemed like he was trying to do they were trying to do something where he was going to have a heartfelt moment, he just ended up cracking a joke a few lines into it and yeah. wasn't serious. And he yeah. was he was like a drunk guy, but he was never drunk the whole time. It was... It, Absolutely. It was just... I wish they would have taken it another step further mm-hmm. and gave him a little bit more emotional depth because the other characters yeah. eventually got there. Yeah. And he never really did. Oh, I, I agree with you there. Um Nothing at all against him. I David Harbour's fantastic. I, I really like David Harbour. Yes, but I was even um concerned when that first trailer came out last year. Um I was concerned that he would stick out too much and be too much of like over the top comic yeah. relief. And on a small scale, he kind of was like it, the whole shtick of him being Red Guardian and and mm-hmm. um, him thinking that he's on the same level as Captain America. That's cute and fun. Yeah. Um, but also I it kind of feels like it's it was a little bit a little bit shoehorned in for comic relief. Yeah. yeah. Um in comparison to the tone of the rest of the movie and right. how how it deals with some pretty some pretty uh traumatic and uh frankly kind of messed up um right uh villain activities. Yeah. Because uh, even, you know, in the other other movies, like characters like Mm Spider-Man and like, or if you go to the other, the other universe, uh, Mm -hmm. like the flash, yeah, they had their serious moments and they pulled them off. They still, they, they were still great for comic relief, but Mm -hmm. they, during those serious times, they actually did every once in a while contribute to the seriousness and the emotional pull of a scene. Yeah. Like he never, I don't think he ever really did that. Hardly ever. Yeah. Maybe once. Like, um, to, to your point about, like, the other universe, the DC universe, mm-hmm. the Flash had, like, it, I don't know if this was just in the Snyder Cut or not, but, like, he had that whole moment where he's saving uh, the the uh, the woman, it's the truck and everything, mm-hmm. but then he also choked out a fan in real life. So, I mean, that's <laughs> that's all that's all something. Oh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I I really like David Harbour, but, yeah, I, me too. I had a bit of an issue with that I, I feel like it just could have been better yeah i agree yeah um we'll maybe talk a little bit more about that in spoilers and flesh sure. that out a little yeah, bit yeah there's but... some stuff i want to get into in spoilers yeah before we do that though um in broad terms how'd you feel about taskmaster taskmaster <laughs> uh taskmaster the uh the blue and red villain with the shield um yeah very cool look mm-hmm. and the uh you know obviously the fighting and choreography was was there mm-hmm. um i it wasn't really a surprise no it wasn't a surprise we'll, we'll keep it spoiler free obviously yeah, but keep yeah it spoiler it, free, but yeah um it's it's kind of obvious mm-hmm. but uh but yeah it, it was it was cool and i think the payoff at the end was actually pretty good because I, yeah. again, I think it was very emotional mm-hmm. and it it demonstrated it demonstrated some aspects of the villain mm-hmm. that i think gave him some more depth yeah and so i i appreciated that part of the movie i appreciated that character for that reason mm-hmm. and i think that's really the that was the reason for that character yeah um some emotional cub bumpins for two different characters sure um which again we'll get to i'm dancing around but we'll get to it in spoilers but uh, yeah but yeah i mean throughout the meat of the movie the fighting martial arts and all that is really cool for that character nice nice yeah i, yeah, I i agree i i think the design is really really cool is probably the best part of it right um 
I will say, and and I can talk in more specifics and spoilers, but I kind of I couldn't when when Taskmaster is first established, I was like, Marvel sure loves those shields. <laughs> they do. Um, yeah. And like on one hand, I was like, okay, another character with a shield and everything. I just went through six episodes of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> right. Like, okay, guys. And then on the other hand, it's like, but it looks so fucking cool. <laughs> it does. It is It is so cool the way that they incorporate that into the fight sequences and choreography. Right. Um, but then, and again, we'll go into detail and spoilers, but I feel like the kind of the climax, the the big showdown at the end of it felt as interesting as it was on an emotional level. It also felt like, oh, this is... This is a lot like the the concept is a lot like a an amalgam of like a couple of different endings of Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Uh, totally. Yeah, I was like, okay, they're doing like this thing again. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, that's that's fine. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. But uh, have we exhausted the non spoiler discussion? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I am going to go ahead and play a clip from the trailer. So when we come back, we're going to be spoiling Black Widow. And uh, also, um, if, if you guys are, um, oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm. <laughs> we're going to be spoiling Black Widow. But uh, for the Patreon supporters uh, that are listening to this, uh, this is going to be the end of the episode unless we do potpourri, uh, because we're I'm going to be posting this the non spoiler section on Patreon for the ten dollar level for advanced uh, for for the unreleased uh, or advanced early access content. Obviously, since the movie hasn't come out yet, I'm not going to have our spoiler discussion. So, uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this on Patreon a week early. So, I tell people my sister moved out west. You're a science teacher. Your husband, he renovates houses. You're thinking about moving, but you're going to wait until the interest rates go down. That's not my story. (laughs) Before I was an Avenger, I made mistakes. And a lot of enemies. He's called Science Taskmaster. He controls the Red Room. They're manipulated, fully conscious, but no choices. All right, and spoilers on for Black Widow. Um, you know this this joke does not um, does not does not work. So I apologize in advance. But it's interesting that this comes out July 9th, um, which isn't quite midsummer, but it's. <laughs> something i don't know i really like florence Pugh. <laughs> she's really right. good um so yeah spoilers on for black widow um tiny something we didn't talk about in non-spoilers um that first that opening segment um did you did you feel like they were really hitting the american like the americana vibe yes <laughs> like almost hitting us over the head with it <laughs> literally a giant shiny light up flag on the on the bridge or yes something like yeah and there was like a, either a baseball game or a football game. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, we get it. It's a, it's, it's Ohio. <laughs> right. Like, it's Midwest America. Like, yeah. Okay, guys. <laughs> right. Um, but also something that the movie did that, huh, um, as, as one of my IFJA friends pointed out, um, on Twitter when I, when I tweeted about this, uh, they, <laughs> uh, a movie has finally, ta- has finally taken the, trope of doing a like female female vocal slowed down rock cover uh and put it not not in a trailer but in the actual movie <laughs> because there was a cover nice. of um uh smells like teen spirit uh by malaysia i think is the, uh, her name no clue yeah oh i have a clue because i loved that cover <laughs> Um, it was a good cover. It was very good. And I like I uh, found it last night when I was writing my Fear Street um, review. And like I listened to it uh, quite a bit last night and this morning on the way to work. And it 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 slaps. It's really good. <laughs> um, I'm going to play just a quick clip of it here. Mm-hmm. Um, Load up on guns and bring your friends. It's fun to lose to pretend she's overboard and self 
Okay, so I can't play anymore, I don't think, because then uh, we will get sued. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, but that, I mean, I really like it. <laughs> it's a good cover, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Very simple. Yep, so I was listening to it um, last night while I was writing my Fear Street review, and it made the act of writing the Fear Street review feel very dramatic. <laughs> um, but no, but that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, so spoilers on for Black Widow. Um, what did you want to talk about about Alexi? I I think in that opening scene, he had a couple of genuine, like, fatherly moments. Mm-hmm. But there were so many moments later on, uh, after that his daughters had grown up, mm-hmm. um, that they were looking for a fatherly moment, and he would just crack the fucking joke. Yeah. And it's like, and that would have been, f- it would have been okay if he had done it, like, four times out of five, but, like... Mm-hmm. He he needed to finally step. I wanted to see some growth from him. Yeah, when he does get like that growth or anything, it is also played kind of a reverse comedic thing where it's like, oh, he's not actually talking to Natasha, right? Um, and then he's trying to repeat it, but then he can't say it or something. Whatever happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it, um, he he could have used a little work. Yeah, um, and again, like not, he tries to say it, but then he, like he's not where he doesn't have an earpiece. Right. Oh, ha ha. Which was funny. It was, yeah, it was and funny. I, I liked it, but it's like he should have had that. Cathartic moment. Cathartic moment. Yeah. Later on in the movie. Um, um, and it's no fault of David Harbour. Oh, absolutely He, he did a great job with all that. He was funny, mm-hmm. and he delivered those lines really well. Had a really good look to him yeah. the whole time. Uh, he, I, I really like David Harbour, so. Me too. And I forgot to mention this in non-spoilers, but uh, the internet. Uh, there was a little bit of backlash against a critic oh who wrote a review of Black Widow. Um, I'm going to read this from The Wrap. Um so Guardian Critic called out for quote unquote creepy Black Widow review fixated on Scarlett Johansson's quote sensuous voice. <laughs> what? Yeah. So and and I think that that, that headline's a little misleading because I read the actual review. It's gross. It's dumb. It's mm. stupid. But uh, on Guardian, the Guardian dot com or Guardian dot com, what is it? Um, the Guardian dot com. Uh, Peter Bradshaw he wrote a review of Black Widow. That there are two really creepy and weird moments in the review that <laughs> need to be called attention to. Mm-hmm. Um, the first is like the opening sentence of it is, um, uh, you know what? I'm going to actually just click on the actual review. Um, oh, no. Yep. <laughs> uh, I said that. I'm going to click on the actual review thinking that the that the quote that I had wasn't actually the first sentence of it. <laughs> but clicking on the actual review, it's the first sentence of the review. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, quote, the sensuous cough syrup purr of Scarlett Johansson's voice is something I've missed in lockdown. Oh. Now it's back with a throaty vengeance and the highly enjoyable standalone episode for which her character, Black Widow, was well overdue. Jeez. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's kind of kind of gross and creepy. Yeah. Um and then so like so like let's talk about that just a little bit. Um that, that there's nothing like something that I really appreciate about uh, about Black Widow is that it doesn't really at all like sexualize the female characters. Yeah. Like at all. Like none of like it's not a sexualized fetishism fetishism thing yeah um which is something i found really really good um or not intentionally anyway not inten- yeah not intentionally I mean, they're wearing skin tight uniforms oh yeah sure they're pretty hot <laughs> yeah. but it's not, yeah it's not oh my not- blood's red like yours tiny <laughs> but um no but yeah I, i'm yeah but it wasn't like like the most the the thing what i think w- was really uh a nice like wink to that I would say, like, kind of bygone era of just overly sexualizing women in action movies. Yeah. Um, the kind of wink to that is the constant reference to uh, the Black Widow pose. <laughs> Where, yeah right uh and like where where yelena is like it's like you're it's like you're trying to like get everyone's attention or something like that or <laughs> you're performing some ballet or something i don't remember what it was but yeah. uh, like that is that is a lot of fun and i think i i saw a quote or something from scarlett johansson where she's where she was like i spent years perfecting that and then <laughs> and then and then florence Pugh like nails it on the first take or first try <laughs> like what the fuck that's funny yeah <laughs> um so yeah so so to open a review with 
with the very kind of kind of gross uh horniness of talking yeah. about uh Scarlett Johansson's voice is just something something really creepy. I mean, it's one thing to say like, "Oh, Scarlett Johansson has a sexy voice." Yeah, yeah. She, she does, but he's does. basically talking about how he got a boner. That's Yeah. Practically what he was saying. And I mean, also like I mean, Devil's Advocate, like this isn't the movie her. <laughs> like Right. She has more than a voice in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Totally. So uh, Yeah. So it's yeah. it's just it's dumb. It's it's juvenile and, and uh gross, but arguably more disturbing and gross and just like just what the fuck in, in this is uh uh let me find it here. The other big thing that he did. Okay. Ah, Jesus Christ. Okay. Um just take on blah blah blah. First they have sort of their own differences. Okay. So here's the quote. And prepare yourself, Tiny. <laughs> um quote, somehow the most teasingly potent relationship revealed here is that Electra complex, the bond between Black Widow and her preposterous old dad, who is very large, very given to fits of temper, and likes smashing things. Does this, perhaps, give us a Freudian clue to Black Widow's uh, tendress for Dr. Bruce Banner, the alter ego of Hulk? Uh, this glimpse into her troubled psyche is worth the price of admission on its own. What? <laughs> I, I, did anyone else pick up on anything remotely even close to that? No, no. Because it's and not like, there. <laughs> yeah. And like fellow IFJ member, M- Emily Wheeler, uh, she tweeted about that. And like I had mentioned, like I said, like, oh, yeah, that that part of the review got a big yikes out of me. And she said, if if it, if you if you see Black Widow and if and you're and you're you find yourself wondering about uh, Natasha's dating habits, you're watching the movie wrong <laughs> <laughs> and like wholeheartedly agree. Right. Um, yeah, just fucking weird. Yeah, that's dumb. Yeah, and then she had also mentioned that it is, uh, in her own tweet, um, said something about how, like, what she finds troubling is that this, this, this review is written just, it's basically just the male gaze, just completely on full display. Right. And to that end, (laughs) this final part that I'll read from it is just, like, like, what fucking movie did he watch? (laughs) Um, so... (laughs) <laughs> uh let's see okay here we go um for fans of black widow and everyone else this episode is great fun and harbor could well ascend to spin off greatness of his own my question tiny <laughs> oh boy is david Har- harbor is great yeah. i i like him as an actor i i i didn't have as many issues with it with the character and the writing i do i do agree that it is to comic relief and everything mm-hmm. But who the fuck watches this movie and thinks, oh, David Harbour could be set up for a spinoff when it's so fucking clearly, clearly designed as right. a backdoor pilot for Florence Pugh to be in the MCU? Right. Like, I, I'm i astonished by that. Yeah. I just, I don't get it. Right. <sighs> I mean, don't get me wrong. If they made a Red Guardian movie. Yeah. Like a retro 80s thing. Yeah. That'd be kind of fun and right. like anti-hero kind of thing maybe yeah or i don't take it some kind of direction but the post credit scene is not him visiting natasha right, exactly grave. right yeah, yeah so he's totally yeah that reviewers that's weird. yeah yeah that's just a weird so interpretation dumb. to bring away yeah i'm not gonna put a link to it in the show notes just google the guardian <laughs> right black widow review um i'm surprised they haven't taken it down yet uh yeah i don't i don't know you yeah, know who knows um, if they will yeah. or not yeah um, so yeah, but anyway, that was a tangent, but, yeah, right. uh, yeah, uh, Red Guardian, I also felt, uh, found his fight, uh, his big fight scene with, um, with Taskmaster, I felt like it was a little bit lackluster. It was lacking, it was yeah. short. Short. Hardly even existed. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was, it was too brief and too mm-hmm. cut away from. Right. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. So yeah, that, that was, was a little disappointing. Yeah, they didn't stay with it very long. It was cut away from a lot, like you right. said. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, yeah. not the best. But um, speaking of um, Taskmaster, I had to think of what the hell her name was. Right. Did they say that during the movie? That that's what her name was? Uh, yeah, it's actually in the in the uh, trailer, too, um, oh, that really? I played. <laughs> um, Jesus. Yeah. I did uh, not pick up on that at all. Yeah, I honestly, I only knew it because I knew it from just marketing and just reading about it. So okay. like, I mean, it's like kind of a blink and you miss it kind okay. of thing. Gotcha. Um, 
It's not a horrible name, but it's not very good. Yeah. Taskmaster. Yeah. I don't really like it. Yeah. Um, but to that character, mm. I... So, throughout the movie, it, well, especially by the time we had seen that Taskmaster the second or third time, I was like, that's Olga Kirilenko. Like, oh, yeah. Because I knew she was in the movie, and mm-hmm. she was in the credits, and I was like, well, they haven't shown her yet. Yeah. I was thinking, may, I, I, no, I never I never thought she was going to be the mom, because obviously oh, we yeah. saw her in the opening. It was uh, Rachel Weisz, but mm-hmm. um, I was like, yeah, that's got to be Olga Kirilenko under mm-hmm. there. I didn't necessarily know that it was going to be... Um, Ray Winstone's daughter. Right. I didn't necessarily make that connection, but um, uh, I knew it was going to be her the whole time. It's kind mm-hmm. of a shame because I haven't, again, I haven't seen her in a lot. Yeah. Um, but I remember her being pretty decent. Yeah. And she has like one line. Uh, right. Yeah. In the movie, which it's part of the character. I get it. But yeah. it's just like, it's kind of a bummer that she didn't really get much to do. I agree. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah, it is. But it's just, that's just, it's not anybody's fault. It's just kind of the nature of the character. Yeah. And, and again, to, to what we were dancing around with, uh, in non spoiler, it, she isn't given a lot to do with, but also like as tragic and, and emotional as that character arc is mm-hmm. for as limited screen time as it is, as is devoted to it, it's also hampered by the fact that this is, um, in terms of choreography and design and weaponry, <laughs> um, and choreography, it is uh, it's redundant. It's Winter Soldier. It's Captain right. America. It's right. and coupled that with the very Captain America, the Winter Soldier ending mm-hmm. with like instead of helicarriers, they're just in his like his his Floating his cloud layer. layer. Yeah. yeah, cloud layer. And it's it's falling to the falling down. It's I mean it's the same thing. It is it totally. <laughs> yeah. Is. But her, so her character existed for two emotional payoffs, I think. Mm-hmm. The first one was, I think she helped drive home the point of just how depraved Ray Winstone's character yeah. is, v- Verkov or whatever his name is, mm-hmm. um, because he did something so, ho- like, that's horrible to do to <laughs> yeah. your own daughter, obviously. Yeah. Uh, just take over her body. And to helpless women, too. So, well, I'm, I'm saying, oh, yeah, yeah, obviously. The emotional payoff as well. For I got you. Right. So that it was, it, it further demonstrated just how depraved and just how not human he is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it also was even more of a payoff for Natasha with the yeah. whole you know, remorse and mm-hmm. making amends thing. That which, yeah. that scene, so after the, after the climax, and you know she actually hits her with the antidote stuff, and yeah. she breaks her bond or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she, the first thing, as soon as it happens, she just she apologizes, mm-hmm. has that emotional breakdown where she apologizes. Like I actually got choked up. Yeah, that was good. I got a little choked up just because. Mm-hmm. And I, I think the credit goes to Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, her acting in that moment. It, she's got a bright future. <laughs> she's yeah, she's, yeah. she's gonna be good. Um, it reminded me of her big scene in Endgame. Yes. She, oh yeah. She's saying it's okay mm-hmm. with tears in her eyes, and like that got me in that movie. And yeah, it's funny because it's it's literally thirty seconds after a giant action scene where <laughs> right. literally you know they're crashing to the ground and stuff like you were just saying. Yeah, um, and she has that moment that was really that was just a really good moment, and mm-hmm. and she uh, jumping off track from the Taskmaster character, but. She has a similar moment with her sister where she says, yeah. I really do consider you my sister. And yes. That was, that, again, and it was both of them did a great yeah. job. That was awesome. Like, it, it's pretty clear from the begin. well, it's clear-ish in the beginning that they're not like a real family unit. They're all undercover and everything. Right. And they're being sent to the Red Room after their mission is over when they go to Cuba and everything. And their quote-unquote mother is, you know, taken away because mm-hmm. uh, of the gunshot wound and everything. It's 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 not spelled out there, but it's pretty obvious and and you can kind of infer by it that they're not a real family unit and everything Mm -hmm. but the the scene where that's that's spelled out more specifically in the dinner scene Mm -hmm. when they're all when they're all eating their meal together it's it's so it it really struck an emotional chord with me um I think most of that is just the acting of Scarlett Johansson and Florence, Florence Pugh. Yeah. Like when Florence Pugh's character, when Yelena is like, it was real to me and everything like mm-hmm. that's just, and when she goes to the room and then, and then he's trying to comfort her and he goes on that tangent, he's the comic relief and everything. Right. <laughs> um, it's just, it, it was, it really brought this emotional context to the movie um, that really made, that was really satisfying to me. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. They hit those moments really well. Yeah. Yeah. And what? How did you feel about the um, the um, 
double double agent kind of um i guess not double agent but like the ocean's 11 heist kind of thing yeah i thought it was fun i Mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily see that coming me neither um i like that he used the established technology from like well (laughs) uh oh from uh from winter soldier was it winter soldier yeah yeah, where yeah, they, yeah. Is, that's where they... Yes, Winter Soldier. Yep. Yeah, they screw with, uh, up Bucky. Yeah, with, what's his face? Um, Robert oh. Redford. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I liked it because it gave further depth to Melina, uh, mm-hmm. Rachel Weisz's character. Yeah. Because um, it made her, you know, they she uh, up to that point she was presented as a dyed-in-the-wool agent yeah. for Russia, and she's all about the mission and all that mm-hmm. crap, you know, and she's... That's how she's presented, and, mm-hmm. and that twist—not really, it's a bit of a twist, I yeah. guess—but that that event and that that change in her character was really mm-hmm. satisfying because yeah. it just made her a much more rel- well-rounded character, made her much more sympathetic. Yeah, and um, and Rachel Weisz did pretty well with it. I I agree, and I think yeah. the the fact that she's not in the movie really until they get to the the farmhouse or wherever right um that really helped make that the kind of um uh the the kind of pulling the wool over our eyes at the, as the audience mm-hmm. made that click even better because like we meet her we have the emotional kind of dinner scene where they're arguing about if they're a real family mm-hmm. um and then we get her betrayal and everything and then when we get to the the big kind of climax of it, we get the backstory of that. We get the we get the reversal of that. We get the flashbacks to oh, this is what's really going on. Mm-hmm. And I think that that really helps sell it because I was like I was I, I bought it. I was just like oh okay she's she's evil she's turning on them and okay that's that's fine sure I don't know her um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah but, but that worked yeah um yeah what did you think of the the confrontation between Scarjo and Ray Winstone in the office. That was also really good. Yeah. I liked that. Um I think it had um it had a subtext to it mm-hmm. as well. I think um you know, um sort of a I'm not sure how to qualify it, but it's, you know, it th- th- I think there was a subtext in there about men objectifying women and about and men controlling them. Controlling and using women. Yeah. Um, I think there was subtext there, and it it was obvious, but it wasn't ludicrous. It wasn't like um, distracting. Mm-hmm. It wasn't heavy handed. Yeah. It was it was obvious but subtle, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's con- that's contradictory a little bit, but it yeah. just it made sense. And like it, the, one of the lines that I just thought was good writing was. Um, Ray Winstone's character says something along the lines of, this isn't verbatim, but he says something along the lines of, I tapped into one of the best unused resources in the world, girls. Oh, yeah. And like the way he oh. says it is just, it's gross. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's a very gross thing to say. Like, yeah. And he's showing picture, like, like a, sna- a slideshow yeah. of like young, gr- not like teenagers, but young right. girls. Yeah. Because that's when he would take them and start training them. Yep. And it's just, Because the whole prologue, gross. yeah, it's, the yeah. prologue with Yelena, is like, um, uh, uh, Natasha is saying, like, she's only six years old. Like, right, she, like, right. you can't take her to the Red Room. Right. And, uh, David Harbour's like, you were there when you were even younger. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, just like that kind of grimy, gross kind of mind yeah. control element of it is, is really the true villain, like you were saying. That's yeah. a great way. I, and I hadn't considered that. That's a really good point. Oh yeah, yeah. And the the way that it, uh, I I want to say metastasizes, or the way that it kind of comes forth throughout the movie, and the way that it, the way that the way that ScarJo plays it is just so freaking good. Mm-hmm. Um, and this this kind of, like you said, the kind of underlying kind of theme of like you know controlling people and control like men controlling women that mm-hmm. imbalance of 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 uh of gender roles and everything yeah um i was talking to my friend evan from the ifj and midwest film journal who is a previous guest on the podcast um and he mentioned that uh he felt like the that kind of the kind of darkness that goes into with that is something that he appreciated and was something that he wouldn't have expected if um if the movie was made you know, five years ago, even. Yeah, right. Um, so it's interesting that they were able to to do that, and they they 
you know, did it that way. And then he even yeah. mentioned that it could almost come across as kind of triggering for, for some people if they have trauma oh, yeah. in their life. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. there was something I was going to ask you. I, Maybe it's maybe I just missed it, or maybe it wasn't there. Mm-hmm. But is it ever referenced as to why uh, Ray Winstone's character Verkoff or whatever his name is? Mm-hmm. Is it ever referenced as to why he only wants girls, as opposed to like I, why not young boys? Like I don't know. I don't know if it is referenced in the, this movie. I missed it. It may be. I mean, it may be something that Black Widow okay. uh, even explains in. A different movie. In Age of Ultron when she's talking to Bruce about it. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't yeah. sure, yeah. Um, yeah. I'd be curious. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's... It doesn't matter necessarily, right. but I was just curious. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, what else can we talk about? <sighs> uh, overall thoughts on the action? Yeah. yeah. I, action was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the... Um, that opening scene where they kind of escape and get on the plane mm-hmm. was nice and simple, but, yeah. but just fun. Right. Um, introduced uh, Alexi as like a super soldier yeah. type thing. Um, and uh, the prison break scene was just fun. That was fun. And also the location. That, yeah, it, was it really looked cool so freaking cool. Yeah. Definitely Especially cool. like with the snow and against like uh, Scarlett Johansson's like white outfit. Right. Just, it looked just so cool. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, and then the, uh, the, the fight early on, the fight on the bridge between her and, mm-hmm. uh, Taskmaster, Taskmaster was yeah. pretty cool. Um, just, yeah, some really cool, really cool locations and set pieces mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Definitely, again, memorable stuff. Um, it made, made me think of the, there's like a big bridge fight in the Winter Soldier. Oh yeah. And I think it's where, uh, I'll spoil the movie. It's oh, six yeah. years old this one or whatever, mm. um, where Bucky takes off the winter soldier takes off his mask and he yeah. sees that it's Bucky for the first time. Right. It sort of made me think of that a little bit. Mm-hmm. It wasn't necessarily as good or as memorable as that, but, uh, right. But yeah, definitely, definitely good on that regard. The yep. action. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, other, other final thought, we didn't talk about this character <laughs> at all, <laughs> but, uh, but black widow's friend who helps yeah. her get things, her gear guy. Yeah. I, I it kind of, shoehorned in there shoehorned in there kind of felt a little out of place there's no context for him right which i don't think there really needs to be because i mean she has resources and everything Mm -hmm. but they have this weird kind of slightly flirtatious or unrequited kind of attraction on his part to her right and it's just like i fine but Mm -hmm. it just it felt i don't know it kind of felt a little i don't know random yeah i just remember thinking oh yeah this guy again okay why yeah yeah I mean, he did a fine job acting sure, wise, sure, but yeah. I mean, he had an accent and everything, so I don't know. <laughs> right. Um, so, um, yeah, that was fine. I think the last thing to talk about is the stinger at the end. Yes, the post credit scene. Right. And I said at the beginning, and I've said several times before, mm-hmm. this movie's five years too late. Mm-hmm. I wonder if this had come out, you know, in 2016. It's set in 2016, essentially. Right. Um, I wonder if this had come out in like 2015, 2016. Mm hmm how that stinger would be different because yeah you know because obviously she would still be alive <laughs> right and the character of uh valentina or whatever her mm-hmm. name is i think that's right played by julia louis dreyfus right. uh wasn't around so yeah um that it'd be interesting i mean i, I liked that stinger well mm-hmm. enough i'm i'm curious to see where that goes yeah um, like you said it's a blatant setup for right keeping her in the mcu both keeping her in the mcu and potentially also setting up hawkeye the show the hawkeye show yeah um yeah, yeah. Which I guess is coming out in December or around Christmas time. Right, Christmas time. Um, yeah. But what I found interesting about that, and again, that's why I said uh, like it's a backdoor pilot for Florence Pugh. She's mm-hmm. like it's it's her introduction to the MCU. She's going to be in more movies, I'm sure. Yeah. But what I found interesting to that is like I, I kind of I I kind of felt I, I kind of had that feeling that like oh yeah this is coming super late like this is this is late this mm-hmm. this should have been five years ago. But then when we got to that, I, like I kept wondering through the credits, I was like, I wonder what, like what, what the end credit scene is going to be. What's what's the post credit scene going to be? Like, what is it going to set up? I was wondering, like, oh, is it going to set up like the new Thanos or the new big bad of this this yeah. phase of it and everything? Is it going to be something that big? And then we fade in to 
uh, Natasha's headstone. And I'm like, oh, oh, shit. Okay, yeah, because she's dead. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Okay. And like that, I just, I felt like that was, that was, that was a big kind of emotional moment, I think, for me. Um, And I didn't really track that well what, uh the conversation was like i'm a little unclear on valentino or valentino valentina Mm -hmm. um as a character because spoilers for falcon and the winter soul well let's not go into spoilers yeah but uh but yeah she's i I don't know is she a good guy is she a bad guy right she's still mysterious yeah it's very very mysterious and mercurial yeah um yeah and another thing i wanted to touch on is so thinking back on the whole mcu Mm -hmm. We had a lot of the, outside of the Avengers movies, we had a lot of movies and sequels for the big three, Captain Mm -hmm. America, Thor, and uh, Iron Man. Mm -hmm. And people were always talking about, okay, well, when is there going to be Black Widow movie? When's there going to be another Hulk movie? When's there going to be a Hawkeye movie? All this other stuff. And I feel like... That was probably after the first Avengers, maybe after Ultron, people were mm-hmm. really getting amped up. Like, are we going to have any standalone movies for these other characters that we're yeah. really falling in love with here? And for me, I, I'm curious if the if the debate exists online. Are there were th- since you know 2014, 2015? Have there been people who are really demanding a Hawkeye movie or a Hulk movie or a Nick Fury movie? Because for me. Huh. The only one I really wanted to see was Black Widow. Yeah. Ha- Hawk- I just don't find Same Hawkeye here. all that interesting. Mm-hmm. He's not a bad character at all. Right. And like Hulk is just kind of played out, I guess. And mm-hmm. there was the whole goofy Edward Norton movie. And yeah. it's kind of like, I, I don't know. I feel like I feel, I wasn't, I just really wasn't that interested in Hulk as, as, an, as a standalone character. Yeah. He fits it, so well in the Avengers. Right. Um, I, I think I, I'm, I don't have my ear quite close. Uh, close to the ground in terms of internet kind of um requests okay <laughs> for what what they what they want in as stand, as far as standalone movies go in the MCU mm-hmm. specifically because I'm not familiar with the comics and I think a lot of that like if people are clamoring for a Hawkeye show or movie I think it's because they're looking at the comics and yeah. looking at the stories that are in the comics same with like Hulk um I know a big thing with Hulk was like the Planet Hulk story, which I don't know much about. It's like, I think part of it was kind of borrowed or, or referenced in Ragnarok. But um, my understanding of it is that he crash lands on a planet where he like fights like in cage matches or something. I, I don't know. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I don't know. But um, I just remember like, I, I I don't know, but it, Google it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think that the the internet fervor for any MCU movie is based pretty much solely on, on comic book lore and what's established in the comics, gotcha. which is okay. something that I am not familiar with. Okay. Yeah. See, because I personally would have liked sometime between like 2000, because uh, Avengers came out in 2011, I think. 12. Was it 12? Yeah. So sometime between 2012 and 16, I would have liked to see an origin movie for Black Widow, like where yeah. she gets out of the Widow program or the Red Room thing and she's mm-hmm. helped out by Clint Barton right. to become part of S.H.I.E.L.D. That would have been, f- I would have liked to see that. Mm-hmm. And then this could have been a cool sequel yeah. where she, you know, makes up for that and we could have had at least two Black Widow movies by now, I think. Right. Um, it's kind of a shame. Because again, I, I, I'm interested in that, but just and that's just me personally. But yeah, Hawkeye and Hulk, I'm like, yeah, that's that's fine. I don't I don't really need to see anything more about them. But sure, Black Widow, I think is a, has a lot more depth. And, yeah, another yeah. thing I I want to kind of touch on before we wrap up um, is I find it interesting that um, Disney Plus and their Marvel Cinematic Universe series. Um, We've had WandaVision. We've had Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We're in the midst of Loki. Mm-hmm. Um, check out patreon.com slash obsessive viewer. Um, so uh, the, uh, it, I find it interesting that the, that they, that they are making the Marvel Cinematic Universe shows on Disney Plus, And there's a bunch in the pipeline and everything. They are they are making an effort to interconnect them with the movies. Mm-hmm. So, like having Julia Louis Dreyfus appear in Black Widow is a very interesting Easter egg and extension of the D- 
Disney Plus series. And I think it shows a lot of confidence on their part. Yeah. Um, which is confidence that they have more than earned <laughs> right, right. over the last uh, 10 years. Decade, yeah. Decade and a half, just about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I don't know. So uh, yeah. Anyway, so final thoughts on Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was definitely fun. I, mm-hmm. I ended up giving it three and a half stars. Nice. Um, I took away a couple of points here and there for, for certain things, but definitely mm-hmm. worth watching. Um, fun movie, great performances. I'm glad to see, um, a couple more really good characters get introduced. Um, and, uh, yeah, I had a great time with it. I think it's, nice. uh, it was fun to see again, fun to be, watching Marvel in the theater again. Yeah, I agree. Even if it only, even if it took me six hours to realize that, Oh shit, this was a special theater screening that I went to. (laughs) Um, yeah. So I gave it four stars and, uh, I might have a written review posted at some point, uh, before you're listening to this. I might not, I don't know, Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, so that'll do it for our review of black widow. Yep. Um, next up in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, like I said, we've got Loki going on right now. And then I think the next movie is Shang-Chi, uh, in September, Mm -hmm. which I'm looking forward to. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Do you want to do Potpourri or... I'd rather skip it. Me too, because my voice is shot. Okay. Okay, so we are going to forego potpourri. If you want to hear some potpourri, check out Patreon. Patreon.com slash obsessive viewer. Pledge $1 per month, and you will get access to an exclusive RSS feed. And uh, pledge the other tiers and everything. Um, Still thinking, I don't know if I've said this. I haven't said this on this podcast. I'm thinking about starting a new tier for just me talking about science fiction and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, That might be a $3 tier thing. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Um, But yeah, anyway... um, I'm tired. Tiny, I want to kick you out of my apartment. So uh, so I'm going to play us out. I want to say thank you guys so much for listening to the Obsessive Viewer podcast and all of our related podcasts and everything. Uh, Yeah, we'll see you next time. Don't know what we're going to do. Probably Ebert's Great Movies List review part seven or whatever with Ben. So yeah, having said that, thank you guys so much for listening and we'll see you next time. And now, here's a short clip from our Patreon-exclusive RSS feed. To hear the full clip and more exclusive Patreon content, go to patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer and become a patron at the minimum rate of $1 per month. Thank you and enjoy. And now Loki is about to premiere on Disney+. Plus. And I got some screeners for the first two episodes before the show premieres on June 9th. And I'm going to review the first episode of Loki. And here's my review of the first episode. Hi, Patreon. <laughs> so I, I thought that Loki had a, had a natural end point there. And to know that he was going to come back in a TV show was kind of like, okay, of the three shows that they, that were on the horizon, WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, I was mildly curious about Loki. I was kind of uninterested in WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I was a hundred percent game for. Now, if you listen to my episodes on Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I was pretty hot and cold on that show. The Obsessive Viewer podcast is edited and produced by Matt Hurt and presented by ObsessiveViewer.com. For a full archive of our episodes, go to ObsessiveViewer.com slash OV archive. You can also like our Facebook page and join the OV Facebook group at Facebook.com slash The Obsessive Viewer. And follow us on Twitter at Obsessive Viewer and at Obsessive Tiny. And follow our recurring co-hosts at I am Mike White, that's me, at R.A. Feckus and at Burger underscore Lurker. If you enjoy the show, please take a couple minutes to leave us a rating and a quick review on Apple Podcasts. This is the easiest way to support what we do, and all it costs is a little bit of your time. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can make a PayPal donation at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. Or support us on Patreon for recurring donations and access to commentary tracks and B-roll audio recorded exclusively for patrons at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer. Every donation goes toward paying the fees to keep the podcast running and is greatly appreciated. For official Obsessive Viewer merch, including shirts, mugs, phone cases, and more, visit our Tee Public store. 
You can find a link to the store in the show notes of this episode and at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. Or you can simply search for Obsessive Viewer at tpublic.com, T-E-E, public.com. For information about our annual live event showcasing short horror films from local filmmakers, check out shocktoberinirvington.com. And for an archive of all our events, as well as news about potential future events, head over to obsessiveviewer.com slash live. For more podcast content, you can find Anthology, Matt's solo podcast covering The Twilight Zone, and other classic and contemporary science fiction anthology TV shows at anthologypod.com and on Twitter at OVAnthologyPod. You can also find Tower Junkies, a podcast where Matt and Tiny share their love of all things Stephen King and his magnum opus, The Dark Tower Series, at towerjunkiespod.com and at towerjunkiespod on Twitter. And finally, check out The Secular Perspective, Tiny's side project podcast, which tackles current events and life's big questions from the perspective of secular hosts Chad and Amanda at thesecularperspective.com. The theme music for The Obsessive Viewer comes courtesy of the band Loud Like from their EP, Mistakes We Must Make. Additional bumper music is provided courtesy of As Good As It Gets, which can be found at facebook.com slash asgoodasitgetsband. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Kitty! Pizza World is a silly little baby. Yes, Daddy, I know that I'm a silly little baby, but I am also a silly little kitty. <laughs>